Welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about the different types of insulin and their characteristics. The injectable insulin preparations can be used for all types of diabetes, like type 1, type 2, and gestational diabetes. It works exactly like any other insulin by stimulating the insulin receptor, which is a tyrosine kinase receptor, and this triggers effect in three organs the liver, the muscle, and fat. Once insulin receptor is triggered, the liver will store more glucose as glycogen and the muscles will make more protein and increase the reuptake of potassium and fat tissue will store more triglycerides. As a common side effect, all insulin preparations can cause hypoglycemia, hypersensitivity reaction to the insulin or its components and of course lipodystrophy, which is a destruction of the local fat tissue due to repeated injections. We classify insulin into four groups based on the duration of their action. Rapid insulin acts very quickly and the effect also disappears very quickly. This includes Lispro, Aspart, and Glulacine. These are especially useful in controlling postprandial hyperglycemia. The patient takes the injection before or during the meal, and by the time they finish their meal, the hyperglycemia would reach its peak, and the insulin would start working. Next, we have short-acting insulin, which is the regular insulin. It starts working in about 30 minutes, and reaches its peak in 2-4 to four hours, and it lasts as long as 8 hours. This is excellent in treating hyperglycemia and DKA. Next we have intermediate insulin. This includes NPH. These preparations are normal insulin suspended in protamine and zinc. This significantly delays the absorption of insulin. So it starts working in about 2 hours and reaches the peak in 4 to 12 hours and it lasts as long as 18 hours. So patients can control their diabetes by taking intermediate insulin twice a day. And finally we have long-acting insulin. These preparations are designed in a way to bind to fatty tissue very strongly. They also bind to albumin. This gives them the characteristic of prolonged sustained release. Their effects doesn't have a specific starting point or a peak, but they can last as long as 24 hours. These include Ditimer and Glargine. And here's a small quiz for you. What is the management of diabetic ketoacidosis? And here is the answer. Alright guys, that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully this helps.